Hello everyone, my name is Valentina Zhang. The title of my presentation today is Individualized Facial Emotion Recognition Through Dual Representation and Group Established Context. Um, the goal of my research is to improve FER accuracy, which is critical to clinical care and many other app FER application contexts that are sensitive to error. So first, let's take a quick look at some of the current limitations of the known FER approaches and establish the problem. So my research focused on three main limiting factors in the existing approaches that are critical to FER accuracy. Number one, facial representation. Number two, emotional state ground truth. And number three, deep learning and model training data. In this presentation, we will explore the alternatives on these three dimensions. In the case of facial representation, our FER system arbitrates between two facial representations instead of relying on just a single representation. Ground truth is an extremely challenging issue in FER. The best known approaches currently have been relying on professional actors, although recent studies have shown the facial expressions of trained actors are quite different from the rest of us. In this research, we propose using group behavioral context to automatically derive ground truth. Lastly, we experiment with a way to establish individualized data instead of relying on universal data. Putting all three improvements together, we will show some preliminary yet promising results. Um, before I go into the details of my research, I just wanted to provide some brief introduction on the science um, of FER. Emotion science traces its roots back to the times of Charles Darwin and William James. Within the Western thought, cognition or thinking um, of emotion have traditionally been conceived as adversaries. However, Darwin and James discovered that it is also possible to understand emotion within a cognitive framework or to treat cognition and emotion as integrated neural networks. In the context of facial emotion recognition, Darwin established that facial expressions have robust causal relationships with emotion states. James went further and asserted that facial expression is chiefly responsible for emotional state. In other words, if you don't show an emotion, you don't really feel that emotion. A modern time, a mind hack along this line is a trick that if you force a smile into your face, your face will automatically cheer you up. Fast forward to more recent times, there have been three most cited research that has been established on the importance of facial emotion recognition. The first one is from Albert Moramian, who has shown that facial emotion play an important role in communication. He concluded that 7% of human communication related to emotions and attitudes, and the rest actually all come from nonverbal sources. Tone of voice accounts for 38%, and the remaining 55% comes from facial expressions. In the second research, Paul Ekman proposed seven universal emotions. Subsequent scientific research has classified six facial expressions, which correspond to distinct universal emotions, disgust, sadness, happiness, fear, anger, and surprise. These are the emotions that I'll be working on today. And in the third groundbreaking research, Salome and Mayer conceptualized emotional intelligence and its significance. From a scientific standpoint, the research claims that emotional intelligence is the ability to accurately perceive one's own and other's emotions, to understand the signals that emotions send about relationships, and to manage one's own and other's emotions. Today, FER is being put to work in many useful application contexts. Let's take human-computer interaction for one example. FDR has been showed, shown to hold undeniable benefits in certain situations, such as driving. Human factors like distracted driving, which ranks among the top contributors of road fatalities, could be really all but eliminated following an adequate introduction of FDR-based systems. In fact, proposals to mandate the use of such devices are being introduced worldwide. We can take human-human interaction for another example. Our FVR technology has reached a point where it can monitor or even manipulate mental states as a means of cognitive enhancement for professionals like physicians or pilots and many others, which lead to effective learning and communication. And FVR applications also exist in non-interaction contexts. Let's take self-care as an example. There's been a recent report that a single clinically proven AI-powered mental health chatbot called TESS has over 29 million people with paid access. It turns out that when it comes to mental health, people prefer confiding with robots rather than humans. 
And finally, FER is being considered by some as a gateway towards truly intelligent machines. Some research has even proposed that emotion may be that last piece of the puzzle to creating natural intelligence for conscious being. Now, here's a roadmap for a typical FER system implementation. It starts off with a facial recognition. Um, our research uses a standard algorithm from the OpenCV library for this step. And then we humans see faces in everyday objects. The phenomenon is called pareidolia and involves a particular part of the human brain called the fusiform face area. More on that later. The second step of the FER is facial emotion detection. And here we make the decisions on how to capture facial expressions and how to label the data. And the last step is where we select the system architecture and the specific AI techniques for FER. Now, as shown on the previous slide, there are two dominant families of facial representations, pixel-based and semantics-based. So let's take a closer look. The success of deep learning in an image-based processing task is modeled upon a biological vision and brain information processing. FER is really no different. Let's take the pixel-based FER system, for example. It very closely resembles how the fusiform face area of our brain processes facial expressions. The whole face is processed holistically, and no specific features are extracted or analyzed. The model we use in our system is shown here on the right, and it's a fully convolutional neural network composed of 60 convolutional and separable convolutional layers and has a 60% training accuracy. Now, before I talk um, about the landmark base model, let me talk a little bit about facial landmarks. Facial landmarks are 68 points on a face, anatomically defined facial action units, AU, which can be directly mapped to the six universal emotions. And you know, this is a very suitable representation of data, which can significantly increase the accuracy of a model. In a human's face recognition system, the occipital face area in the brain recognizes these parts of the face, such as the eyes, nose, mouth, which is very similar to how a model trained on facial landmarks works. The occipital face area, the OFA, recognizes the face structures and outlines and shapes. The landmark-based model we use is a fully connected ANN with two hidden layers of 128 neurons using the rectified linear unit activation function and the Atomax optimizer. The model training accuracy achieved here is 56%. Now I'm going to talk a little bit more about the neuroscience inspiration behind our research. So in the human brain, a region called the fusiform face area encodes the face identity information holistically. So this really resembles how a model trained on full images would function. On the other hand, the other region of the brain called the occipital face area is more sensitive to extracted facial features, such as eyes, nose, and mouth, which resembles a model trained on facial landmarks. Our hypothesis is that a model trained on full images and a model trained on facial landmarks can complement views of emotions. So in order to test this hypothesis, um, we did a comparative study. The results are very interesting. So we used um, this deep fake video. It's a very popular deep fake video on YouTube. Um, the one on the left is Elon Musk's original video, and the one on the right is the Iron Man deep fake. From the correlation map on the right, we can see that the landmark based model picked up strong emotional correlation between the two because the deep fake uses a landmark based technology. In comparison, the pixel based model did not find nearly as strong of a correlation. Deepfakes do not really take emotion into consideration because translating a perceived emotion from one face to another is pretty difficult. So at a pixel level, there are many differences in the emotions between these two videos due to the loss in translation. Now let's take a little bit of a closer look, quantitative look of this example. We manually analyze the complementarity metrics for both models. And since the overlap in true positives, which is 33% and 25%, is less than 51%, we can conclude that the models do in fact provide complementing values in FER. The lower figure displays the emotions that the pixel-based model picked up in the two videos. We can see that at some points, the deep fake seems to be angry as opposed to sad. But based on the metrics, we hypothesize that the two models could be orchestrated to deliver better FER performance. And before I move on to the group emotion synthesis and modeling, I just want to explain a few important concepts our research references. These concepts characterize three different group engagement levels. 
an engaged group could reveal information about the interactions between individuals. However, many group-wide events are unpredictable. A synchronous group shares the same emotion change cadence. Labeling could benefit from knowledge of group-wide events. An homogenous group shares the same emotion. Labeling can directly benefit from group emotions. And now here's an overview of our FER system architecture. From the left are the two FER models that were already discussed, and the recognized emotions are fed into the FER noise reduction component to eliminate transient interference. And then after that, we synthesize the group emotion, which is used for two purposes. One is to use the change cadence to adaptively orchestrate the two FER models in the adaptive FER inference component. And the other is to use the emotion value as a ground truth label for training data generation. Notice that there's a feedback loop at the bottom of the diagram where we maintain the group emotion state. Although this research is only interested in just using the group emotion as a ground truth label, the group emotion state could also be used for modeling and prediction. Now let's dive in and look at each of the components with a little more detail. In the FER noise reduction component, we targeted transient interference in facial expression, such as the speaker's mouth movement or video jitters. We used DFT to remove low energy frequencies so that the lighter components could work with more stable data. In the DFT formula to the right, the lowercase x is thought of like the values of a signal um, at equally spaced times t equals zero all the way to t equals n minus one. The output uppercase xk is a complex number which encodes the amplitude and phase of a sinusoidal wave with frequency cycles per time unit. In group emotion synthesis and cadence detection, we first synthesize the group emotion by summing up the probabilities of each emotion type from all group members. And to account for polarizing sen uh, group sentiment, we use Euclidean distance to check for deviation. And since it can be noisy, we will also use discrete for tr Fourier transform to eliminate noise. And the goal of this component is to create the reference emotion change rate for adaptive FER inference. Now, in the adaptive FER inference, we use the group emotion change cadence as a reference to adaptively adjust the weight function. When the individual change rate is higher than the group, the weight for the landmark based model is increased. And when the individual rate is lower than the group, the weight for the pixel based model is increased. When comparing the change rates, we compute the correlation so that the delta reflects the incorrect emotion readings. The details of the algorithm is to the right here. And now here is an analysis of our adaptive FBR against the adapt non-adaptive um, FBR system where the pixel-based and landmark-based models carry equal constant weights. So the first test, the adaptive model took 20 seconds to adjust and show differences, but then began to detect false positives. Um, we can see that in the next test, there's also false positives of fear detected as well as angry. And we determined that these were false positives by manually inspecting the videos that we used um, as test examples. Um, and now we want to use the group emotion as a ground truth. And so we retrained the deep learning models with the individualized data. So as an example here, this is one of the test examples in which the orange line from the retrained model was able to identify that a certain individual of this group had an inherent sad component in its face. And thus it was recognized, it was able to recognize that, that was a false positive. Um, of course, with this kind of training, the group needs to exercise the full range of emotions for it to be effective. Um, now, here's a summary of the threats to the validity of our research and what we've done to mitigate them. As for the contract validity and the complementary uh, metrics of the image versus landmark based model, um, we support this claim through one, the complementary metrics, and two, the correlation tests. As for the internal validity, um, there may be subjectiveness when manually evaluating the emotions um, that people are experiencing in the test examples that we used. In order to mitigate this, we use two judge agreement and qualitatively discuss false positives and borderline cases. And we have external validity in which we studied um, a small number of pre-recorded videos that may not generalize to larger or other group contexts. So this is something that we will look into in the future.
Um, so in conclusion, our experiment found that the pixel-based and landmark-based facial representation models can provide complementing views of emotions. We've constructed an adaptive group emotion recognition system, learning from both models for better FER accuracy and didactic or small interacting group contexts. And we propose a method to use group emotion as ground truth labels for FER personalization. We demonstrated FER accuracy and personalization, which are highly desirable in instances such as autism care and other applications, sensitive to error, and can benefit from our approach. Um, as for next steps, we would like to validate our approach with more real world data and group context. We also want to enhance the fidelity of our facial representations and the sophistication of our adaptive algorithm. In terms of training data, we want to experiment with finer grade emotion models. Um, and so at this point, I'm ready to take any questions. And if you guys can see the human face in my question mark, the fusiform and occipital face areas of your frame just got activated again. Wow. That's